Hey folks, uh, today in class we talked about deformers, which is this little tab up here. All kinds of different options that allow you to manipulate your meshes and uh, primitives and models that you make. So let's talk about it. <clears throat> First of all, you need an object. Good old cube works well. Uh, in order to um, make it so the deformers can work properly, it's best to add more segments to your model. So in this case, <clears throat> I'm just going to add 10 segments and that should give me enough to work with. Now the reason being is that what we do, well what we do with deformers is first of all choose one. I'll just start with bend. It's pretty easy and notice that what it does is it brings you this purple box around with a little handlebar handlebar allows you to bend and move it around so you can do it with a handlebar and sort of move that in space or you can do it um, manually down here via strength so 30 and angle let's say 90 okay so that gives um, you know gives you this sort of bend now notice that nothing's happened quite yet <clears throat> I need to take the bend and make it a child of the cube so here you can see it's curving along that edge, mimicking the shape of the outline box. And um, if uh, the reason why we need segment many segments for that is it's going to you know stretch and bend each one of those little segments. If I only have one per side, you can see that not under the one one. <clears throat> it it just it tries to bend it, but it, it maintains that uh, you know rigid kind of structure. So it's not really bending because it doesn't have the geometry to do that. So we need to make sure that we have enough segments that it can bend along. Okay, so that's pretty simple. You drop in a def uh, deformer and make it a child of the object you want to use. <clears throat> to use. Uh, a few others. Bulge allows you to expand out your object or in the opposite, make it thin. All right, so bulges out or bulges in. Um, we have uh, shear, that's pretty obvious. Tape, taper allows you to make it you know, either wider or smaller. And if you drop that in, then we have you know, a taper. This, and a lot of these, you can also change the curvature. So this one is curving in for a taper. You could make this 0% curvature, and then it would taper in straight, so more geometric. Um, so check the attributes manager for the different parameters that each one has. <clears throat> um, we talked about twist and melt in class. Melt is a little bit different because it, um, it'll, it, when you pop it in, it'll just flatten it out. It extends the handlebar for you. And then, so what you can do is, you know, if you make it at zero, typically you'd want to, you know, you can animate something like this, right? And and what's interesting about this too is that <clears throat> it depends upon where the deformer is placed, right? So if it's you know, lower down, we get this sort of uh, melt, right? So if we drop it down, maybe more towards the bottom then it's going to go from that cube and then it's going to kind of morph out and melt into that sort of form, right? So you can control that. So then, you know, <clears throat> eventually you could animate this. You know, you could animate that sort of form. Bear with me a second. Okay, back to it. So that's melt. <clears throat> um, the other thing, uh, so I'm just quickly going over these. For each one of these, you can go in depth, explore what they do. Another thing I wanted to note is that um, the proximity of, of your uh, deformer plays part as well. <clears throat> so if we put twist into this cube, notice that it twists it up. <clears throat> and if I take the, the deformer and move it around, right, it's going to change the, the object as well. So that, that's kind of interesting. <clears throat> the other thing is, sorry for all the throat clearing, a lot of classes I taught today. If you click on within the box, um, in the attributes manager, <clears throat> you could have it form, you know, from the box out of the box, right? So this could be maybe maybe that's not the best view, but <clears throat> from up and down, you can have a pretty cool transition. This could be an interesting animation in that sort of form. <clears throat> oh, sorry, hold on. Okay, so so that's the, that's the difference between working with um, within the box limited unlimited um, allows you to sort of have those parameters of the proximity of the deformer to the object. All right, a couple more quickly before we wrap it up here. Um, explosion, you know, this allows you to explode the object. It's going to break it up into little tiny um, polygons, right? So it's just taking the polygons apart 
And in class, we talked about the idea of maybe knifing up the object instead to get different shapes of polygons. <clears throat> so that's the explosion. Um, other interesting one, there's explosion effects too, which does a similar sort of thing, but it makes it into actual little tiny objects. You can check that out. Um, another couple I wanted to point out was um, formula and wind. Formula is kind of interesting. <clears throat> it's based on this algorithm down here. Pop that in. And if you click play, it's going to animate it like a wave. So it has that sort of sine wave sort of form. And <clears throat> you can um, manipulate it by uh, changing, um, you know, what sort of face you want it on. So here's the X radio, the Y radio, so you can get that sort of form. You can also change the amplitude by um, increasing or decreasing this number right here. So right now it's 2.0. If I made it 1.0, it would be a different sort of speed and form. So <clears throat> you can, you know, you can really um, play around with that, that algorithm. Um, the other thing is that, let's say, for example, I want this form like um, this, okay? And I wanted to keep this, maintain it, uh, so that it won't move again. Uh, what you can do is make this guy editable, all right? And then uh, select shift, select both the cube and the formula. And then up in the mesh, you can do conversion current state to object. It's going to make a duplicate form of that um, uh, structure, it's going to combine those two together and make a new polygon mesh. So you can just literally click your original one and delete it, and now you have this cube form that if we could play it doesn't animate anymore. It freezes that animation and turns it into that sort of object. Okay, so sometimes that becomes helpful. You know, if you're using that one, the other one that is animated um, is the um, the flag, which, you know, if you make this a bit more flag-like, uh, and, <clears throat> oh, sorry, wind, did I say flag, wind, okay. Wind does the same sort of thing. I don't have enough segments, of course, so make this that, and then hit play, and nothing's happening. And the reason is because... Okay, so I just had it, <clears throat> I had it in the wrong direction. So instead of changing the scale this way, I changed it the other way and it didn't work. So uh, the orientation of the object becomes important here. So here we go longer this way, we can see more of that wave-like sort of form. So anyway, you know, um, if anyone knows the sculptor Richard Serra, this would be an easy way to make a Richard Serra kind of sculpture. Here we go, just like this, but thinner. Here we go. And then again, you can make it editable <clears throat> and do current state to object. And then you'd have this nice kind of wave-like form. Okay. So those, uh, you know, are a handful of deformers that you can use. There's a whole bunch of other ones. My recommendation is to play around with them a bit and see what they do. The other thing you can do is visit um, a site I like to go to quite a bit, Digital Sandwich. Uh, a whole bunch of tutorials and some free stuff on here. And uh, this is a good site. Um, Cinema 4 Deformers, what do they all do? Um, and here you can, there's a list. So it's pretty cool. You can go through in depth. He's kind of gone through each one of these and see what they do and how to use them. And, and some of them shows you a little animation, which is great. And some of them... It shows you um, also uh, a tutorial as well. So some of these, like this one, um, will have a little video tutorial that you can follow, which is great. So check that out, digitalsandwich.net uh, slash mesh dash deformer slash. We'll get you to that spot. Um, and then your assignment <coughs> is to use deformers in three different models. Okay, here's an example. Um, Two of them should be fairly representational, like these two on the right side. One of them can be abstract, but you should use different types of deformers to create either how you model the object or what you do to the object after the fact. And each one should have its own scene, including some sort of background, floor, lighting, uh, materials, textures, that sort of thing. Okay? Do Tuesday the 25th next week, so make sure you get it done. Signing off for now. Let me know if you have questions via email. Talk to you soon.